Hi guys, it's EGC here. So today I'm here with uh, a Nirvana deck profile. Um, this deck I've been playtesting for weeks, and I think I'm more comfortable to showcase to you guys right now. So here we are, and I will also be starting uh, with premium deck profiles since we have the V Clan collection came out already, and some decks I think is uh, okay to show you guys already. So I will see what I can do because uh, after that. I might need to actually pick some time to test some of the decks in order to actually showcase those but those places I might not be able to actually record 5 videos so uh, do kind of expecting 5 videos might not come out as frequently as uh, we currently are and sometimes I will be relying on a remote fight in order to uh, actually get some footage also with this deck I do have uh, some fights recorded I need to check the quality and such and see if we can put up if it's okay then i will put it up but without further ado let's quickly go into uh, the deck content so right deck um basically it's still uh, the same the final parts and then i'm using trickster as a starter we lose the draw no matter what but having a trickster uh basically in your soul uh is a lot better in i think the current situation because we don't want to uh, wait until we meet another trickster yes we use the right line we can pick up one but that's no guarantee where you have the second one because there are times that you do need to like one for stacking up for uh, one type of overdress units and the other one for another purpose in order to give enough pressure so going back to uh, having trickster as starter in nothing to worry about too much but this right line giving you a trickster giving you a uh, foreigner is still very important because there are times that you really can't draw any overdress units so having a chance to at least have one that you can do something is helpful because you will need it for your grade 4 let's put it back here okay and then of course three more tricksters because we just need him uh, we do need to rotate our trickster very much and there are the cards that it still requires a lot of trickster uh, available in order to do a lot more things so just keep it as that and then a uh, four of the maha uh the partner so he's the great four um so his skill is during your turn as long as you have a unit in overture states uh, all your primary units get plus 10k so you don't need to color blast for it but you do need to have a unit with overture states not with the overture skill so if you just play a uh, whatever overdress unit just without nothing at the bottom as the overture states you don't get the 10k so that is something that you do need to know uh, you don't play the 10k but you do need to have something in overdress and that's why you do need um, a like multiple copies of trickster on the field to do multiple overdress because there are cards that lose all your like uh, overdress space so you don't get back to overdress states and then you don't get the power so do be careful about that uh, and where the counter blast goes to the second skill which is uh, counter blast one once per turn uh, from your hand or so to uh, put a Nirvana unit into your drop zone so it can be a grade 3, can be a grade 4 and then uh, from drop zone call a grade 0 up and change your opponent's vanguard if they have 4 or less damage deal 1 damage so this helps you to chase damage uh, if they are on 4 push them to 5 so they can't simply just take your attack and hopefully they get some defensive even though this uh, damage still go through the damage they can still get the defensive but you are not attacking yet so they still need to give you cards to guard and if they don't have defensive they are harder time to guard so uh it's a good card with triple drive but there's some stuff that you do need to note on when using this card carefully because there are chances like when i play i really can't overdress after i do some big turns uh and then he just becomes a blank card because like I don't have texture in the drop zone or I don't have over just stage units so I can't do anything sometimes that happens so uh, do be careful and there are chances that because I'm only running uh, a total of five the founders 
I don't have another copy to actually activate the skills. So, yeah. Do take note about that. Okay, I have a little thing to quick pause, but now we're back. So, continue with the deck list. Uh, next, I'm running three of the uh, Farina Experiler there. Uh, can't pronounce it as good as I can. Uh, so, this is a great for. Uh, Currently, the final form of uh, Farina. Maybe we still have anything new. We don't know. Uh, but this card is great. First, he can only overdress on top of tricks. List. So, don't if you want to use this card, you have a tricks on the field. Don't overdress on top of any other units. You need to put this card on top of tricks to do the overdress. Uh, because there are different cards that require you to overdress on different targets. So do be careful that he only overdress on top of Trickster. And when this card appears on Rigor Circle and you have overdress, so you basically call it on top of Trickster, then uh, choose from your drop zone all of your uh, Tricksters and cards with overdress units and go to go under this card as dress base. Why you didn't do that? Because of the second skill. Which is a once per turn skill. When your finger attacks, you can soul blast one, stand this unit, and for each dress base you have during the turn, this unit get plus 5k. So you at least guarantee 5k from your base trickster when you overdress. And the more overdress unit you have in a drop and trickster that goes under this card, you get more power. Uh, another thing to note of is the restanding skill doesn't require you to be a overdress state in order to activate. So even if you don't get the power, you can still solve last one and restand this card. So, not too bad at all, because there are really chances that you don't have a trickster on the field. Or, you trickster you drop, but you don't have another in the farner. Uh, sadly, then you can't pull it back up. Then, at least you can still call uh, him out. Attack, when your vanguard attacks, solve last one, restand, at least it's still a valid attacker. But, uh, normally, you try to overdress on top of him, or you do one and just call another one while you're still getting a tanky buff from your farner, so at least he's hitting for 23k, so still kind of a threat. And more overdress units uh, one Fariante and two Expector. So, uh, Fariante, I put it in uh, because he is quite easy to overdress and uh, he give a on hit pressure so your opponents need to guard it but so far I couldn't actually use him uh, because on grade 2 I go to other things and maybe sometimes I'm too tight I need to use him for something else uh, I need, maybe I need to pay him as a cost to uh, PG or something so so far he isn't helping me that much but I'm still putting him in but if you do want to switch him up you can uh, put him as one of the expector or maybe one of the extra idea so up to you but this card I think the on hit pressure is still very very nice because you are forcing your opponents to guard which making the other attacks a lot easier to go in uh, so do think about that and then uh, expector he is just a high attack beast stick uh, you Overdress on top of overdress unit so that you always gain a lot of power based on the uh, overdress base you have, and you still get a chance to uh, plus one crit plus 15k with the cost of losing all your dress base in order to do a one punch swing. Uh, now I'm actually doing it more in the past because once I lose that, he's just a blank unit and not helping me, but now. If you put all the cards over their space to your drop, when you have another trickster and you have him, you can pick them all up. So it's not a bad thing to do that. And you still get to push your opponents to ask them do you want to take the extra damage that you want to give. And now they have to choose. Because it's a very big attack, they need to give you a PG or something, but then they can't stop the next turn. Uh, or you can still keep this card like with a very very high attack base or defense base so that your opponents can't simply attack into him and finish him off or they need to do a lot of things in order to do that but of course if you're facing like a prism build or anything feel free to just put them all down uh, to gain crit and pressure them give them ask them to give you more shields 
and the next time go for this and keep applying pressure before they give you too much pressure and then uh, one of the uh, firing up for your right line to pick up and it's a free 20k uh, over the space so and also allows you to use surplus 2 to retire 1 but I don't do that that often now because so is very important for uh, Xperia to actually withstand and then arcs of course we want to draw cards uh, that's so far you still have no reason to take him out because he just helps you uh, draw cards to survive that's why and then uh, two of the uh, Simena to have a chance to find your overreactions that you are lacking for there are chances that I sometimes still can't find what I need but at least something that is usable uh, helping you a lot so far what I'm running is 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 10 and 11 uh, so the hit rate should be okay uh, and I'm only running 2 of her just whenever I need but sometimes I might just ditch her for uh, using the right deck so uh, depending on the situation but so far she's still good but I don't have damage space for that much so I'm only running 2 and uh, I'm running 3 of the refugee uh, to basically help me pick over the unit from the drop and since I'm running great forward so uh, he can have a high chance to counter charge 1 so you basically you do need to kind of last ready, but you are kind of doing it for free. And sometimes you're really just lacking that overdress unit that you want to have from a drop, and he's going to help you out for that. Uh, I find it very useful. Probably once or twice that you only need, but I do want to have him in my hand just in case. So I'm running uh, free. And then. Uh, four of the PGs because we do need PGs uh, so far uh, I still don't have room to actually cut PGs unless I really want more overdress units but I think PG is more important because we keep drawing cards and we want a lot of defend defending uh, value and such PG is always helping you the most and then I'm running uh, three of the order card horns of blessing so what this card does is you play this order you also ditch a overdress unit in order to draw two cards so it's a two for two but you build up the drop so that you can go to great form with more uh, valuable resources or sometimes you actually lack a hand but you do have so many uh, like great freeze great force that are no shield value at all and of course this card has no shield value at all then you can at least use those two cards to change into two things that might be able to help you survive for the turn because there are so many matches that I have my hand full of this, this, this and this and I'm just stuck there because if I don't have a PG I can drop them I can play them out but they are just if they aren't in overdress states they are just kind of useless uh, so at least I get myself a chance to switch for uh, better cards or sometimes that might link me to an arc and I can draw more cards from there and uh, more importantly again is you do need to free up the draw for him to just put all your overdress units under it to make him a lot stronger so it's a okay investment and since you get this for free, so uh, you kind of having a guarantee cost to pay at least once, as long as you have this order in hand. Uh, and after that, it's just based on what kind of overdress units you have in your hand that can overdress on top of tricksters to go for whatever you want, draw cards, gain more power, uh, on hit pressure, go for finishing games whatever it wants. Now entry triggers, uh, still the best uh, triggers for this deck. Dragon Empire uh, open trigger that withstands and since we're going on grade 4 there is a match that I go into with my grade 4 and first I draw two cards from here, I draw two cards from my arcs, I use this to attack 
in my first uh, attack, I pull my Oho Trigger and restand him, and then attack again. I did a to I gained total of ten cards in total. Like I draw two, I draw two, I drive check six. Of course, this is kind of a miracle, but this is something that can happen. So, uh, and this card can attack again as long as you restand. So very very nice, right? And you just just two uh, hundred million isn't saving you. But this can really flip the table around from uh, hardly winning or you don't have a lot of hands to card turn into something that you can at least if I go another turn you apply enough pressure and you can keep pushing from there and after that uh, four more crits four soul charging crits because we do need to soul blast a lot for this uh, and also for arena if you really need to and then uh, three of the 10k shield draw that if you do want an extra draw you can cut one of these but don't cut this for sure because you do want to soul uh, and the funny thing is this card degree 4 boost by this you go into soul first and uh, give whatever 2k power to anything and then your vanguard attacks you can just blast that out so very very important card in the deck and uh, that's why I'm not going to cut him down any further and then uh, for heals because heals is important as well yeah so that's basically the list and uh, so far the how to play is actually quite easy with this deck because you uh, just go with your right line you from 0 to 1 nothing happens from 1 to 2 you get yourself a trickster again Maybe you can overdress into arcs, best situation. If not, uh, nothing much you can do, just let him stay at the back. That happens a lot of my game, but if you can do that early game, that's great. Uh, and then go into this. Then you uh, soul blast your trickster for sure to pick yourself this. And if this goes to damage, then nothing happens, but that's fine. I try to run two, but. Uh, the 2 is only kind of guaranteeing me to get him, but nothing else, so uh, I'd rather run the order, one, run the horns instead to secure my draws. And once you get into uh, your Nirvana, and hopefully you're at least on this or on your, on your Farina, enough any of these uh, like if we did this in the previous turn you can just go for uh, expector to just get him at base good attacks or if you just on top of this you can still do that or you can just do this depending on what kind of power line you want and depending on the deck type that you're facing if your opponent is not going to retire any other stuff then just keep it um, or you can use it Right away, depending on how you want to go for the next turn, if you want to push, then you just dish them up for the extra 15k and 1 crit. Uh, but if you can wait, simply just wait and then go into your, your uh, grade 4. As long as you still have a overdress units, overdress states units, you are fine. Uh, and then if you have another trickster, then you can go for this and see whatever you can put in. But at least try to have like three to four cards at least to pump him a lot more power. If not, he's not that threatening. Uh, then what you can see right here is really like three cards in so. So you can do three times of this, but if you do your uh, arena base arena, you lose two souls. So do be careful. And the skill. Usually, if I do have another one in hand, I probably just ditch this and save one just in case if I need it because uh, if you think you can keep a great 4 in hand and survive that long to rewrite I rather you think you won't be able to do that because there are decks that rushing you so hard that you actually need to ditch the great 4 for another cost so this card might not actually save you uh, in another turn, but 
if you use this card in your hand first, you deal one damage and do all your power turns, and then you guard whatever you can. At least when you have no resources, you can still just pay kind of one and so blast this card when you need. So I usually try to save him. Usually, but if you do really uh, like have no options, you don't have this card in your hand, then of course just just do it. But if you do have a choice from your bravery uh, Nirvana or bravery Nirvana in hand, then what I usually do is I ditch this, and from there you hopefully can turn the table around. Uh, and this deck usually is not expecting yourself to survive that long. You do draw a lot of cards, but there are a lot of cards with no shield value. Like, if we just quickly count right now, this has no shield value, this has no shield value, uh, this has no shield value, no, this one, this, 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 and then uh, our horns, our horns here. Uh, did I pick all my horns? I think there's one more right here. So, in a uh, 4 a 6 deck, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's like nearly 30% of your uh, cards in your deck has no shield value at all. It's kind of like playing a Solar deck. That you have a lot of orders that have no shield value, but at least for Solar you can uh, do a lot of things with your orders to give the threat. But these cards, if they are in your hand, they can well for this you at least can change one of these to another to another two cards with the order. But if you only have like these units in your hand and you you don't have a trickster, they are kind of a dead card for you. Yeah, even though they are strong units, but defensive wise they are kind of a dead card to you. So you do need to make choices on how you want to survive the game, how long you think you can survive the game, uh, and play from there. So this card the deck really requires you to uh, use a lot of brain power, uh, even though the like playing the deck itself is easy. What to give up, what to go for, what's your winning formula, how long you think you can stay in the game, like second uh, grade 3 turn, or basically the first grade 4 turn, second grade 4 turn, or longer. What I usually aim for is first or second grade 4 turn, I am supposed to win with this deck. And that's why I'm going for uh, 8 crit as well, so that I can push as much as I can. Uh, trying to save my souls as much as I can, uh, using cards that I can uh, simply just put all the cards down, uh, like keep playing arcs because I can get him back if I want to, uh, just play any these units that I can pick up, use the horn so that I can change them for something different value, and hopefully we can win. Yeah, but so far this deck is quite fun, but uh, you probably won't find it fun against a uh, prison deck because this deck all your overage units still have no protections on themselves so once they get into prison they go together and uh, it takes you a lot of cost in order to get back but you do need to use a lot of cost already you can see the soul is very tight uh, the canvas is sometimes tight if we get to grade 4 it's kind of better but it's still depending on your hand and now the new uh, Sarah Snow is going to touch your hand as well, so if you're facing a prison deck, you will have a hard time, but all the others, you probably will still be kind of okay, uh, and if you do still love all the arts of Overdress units, then I think you can just go for it, because this deck isn't bad, but you just need to know how you can speed up your game against some slow decks like Sarah Snow, and uh, Bruce, or if you know your opponent is going to do multiple attacks, are you going to like play a rush game against them, or are you playing a little bit more careful, 
don't put everything on your board so you lose them all by multiple attacks so that you cannot come back there's a lot of thinking you need to do yeah so that's it for this uh, deck profile as usual comments down below if you have any questions uh, subscribe for more five videos and deck profiles coming in uh, and yeah just let me know your thoughts on this deck okay so uh, thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys in the next video signing off